Hello, ladies and gents. Rome Reviews here. Please like, comment, subscribe. This is my review for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 5, Episode 12, Last Tango in Paris. Wow, see how different it is when I can actually get a quick little nap in before I do all this shenanigans? Well, this episode starts off with they're still in Paris and a conversation needs to be had. So the conversation between Paris and... And apparently Paris was acting a plum fool. <laughs> At the club! After the club! Paris was talking about K. Michelle. Call K. Michelle. T tell her that I ain't no scammer. I, I said, oh Lord Jesus, can we just move on from this? Um, Moniz and Brooke are going to have a sit down. Con well, I shouldn't say sit down. They're going to have a conversation s just to clear the air. Apple Watts meets her father in church and the thing is their relationship still isn't that much better but she's giving him an update on what's going on in her life she's saying how she has this record deal with shun love and she management deal with shun love and he's kind of concerned with that he wants to see the paperwork but she said look you're going to, have to trust me and that at this stage of my life i can make a grown-up enough decision and make the right choice with signing a contract. If I was a father, I would be concerned too. But it's not like he put her in a situation to where uh, they have that type of relationship. So I understand why she was like, no, no, dude, it, that's not going to happen there. But she also lets me know that her kids um, may not have her for around a month because she went to do a job, you know, do a gig instead of going to her coin court appointed hearing and now she's due 30 days in jail i'm thinking i guess her best friend is gonna watch over the kids and it's gonna pay for it with apple watts but i don't know how that's supposed to work i don't know if the father's gonna financially tribute for that time i don't know how that's gonna work apparently Brooke and Bridget are okay. Br Brooke's actually bringing Bridget to her photo shoot. So things have to be all right. Now, the main reason why she's also there is to talk to Moniz. It, these ladies better be thankful they have the 2018 version of Moniz. Because she wants her life to be regular. She just wants to have, you know, good energy, good vibes. These ladies will have been screwed if this was like 2016, 2017 Moniz. Because <laughs> some of the slick stuff that they were doing, Brooke, the one the one thing, no, the two things I'll give Brooke is at least she was honest about her messiness. I, I, I'm not here for any of her brand of messiness this season, but at least she was honest about it. The thing is that uh, Brooke lets it be known to Moniz, hey, I didn't take your thing too seriously at the studio the other day. I didn't take it too seriously. So I guess she was just warning her, like, you're going to see that. And that's when Moniz let me know that, yeah, I do have, um, I was on certain medication and it wasn't agree with me. So that's, the, you know, me acting the way that I was acting. It was because of that. So she was like, oh, okay. And also I went and cut the track. Um, with Ak with Akbar, with Rockstar, and I just wanted to make sure you're aware of that. So I thought Moniz was gonna. I I said, "Oh Lord, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen?" But 2018, Moniz said, hmm. just fully inhaling and exhaling at the same time. <laughs> you know what? I did actually like the song, but if you cut the track. Then it's yours, you know, shout out to you, congratulations. So I said, look at that, look at that. <laughs> um, but they're going to see how this whole relationship pans out because they still have to deal with the fact that Tierra, Maria, and Moniz aren't in a good, no, and aren't in a good place. And K. Michelle's being brought up, even though we're thinking, Okay, Michelle isn't even here. <laughs> so anyway, Jay Will, he goes and he wants to talk to Ray, Sir Ray. 
Ray, what, what's J, what little, what's the man's name? Mr. Ray, Mr. Ray. So, <laughs> I love how I paused the video and then it came to me anyway. So, he talks to Mr. Ray at, down at the studio and he apologizes to Mr. Ray and says, you know, I'm sorry for my actions. I don't know why, but DirecTV was having some weird technical difficulties with this channel tonight. So, um, after he apologized, then Mr. Ray said, you know what, there's still a slot open. Um, I, as you may know, your friend, LaBrittany, she bailed on us after booking the gig and they're going saying some snarky stuff to LaBrittany. I'm thinking, this is recorded. Do you think that this is okay? Anyway, anyway. So even though Jay Will isn't happy about uh, Sir Ray wanting candy instead of Jay Will, he's willing to do it. He's willing to do it because a gig's a gig. Money's money. That's just where they're at at this point. So like I said, all the ladies are there. They're just breathing. Things have calmed down. They're winding, winding down from the end of the trip. Uh, remember Nikki Baby already left. But uh, Tara Marie still has a chip, a major chip on her shoulder. And it's irritating because of what we find out later on. So I don't even know if I want to recount all this foolishness. Tara Marie feels a certain way because she's saying, Moniz, we're supposed to be cool, right? We're supposed to be cool, right? Then tell me why my enemy, as in K. Michelle, seems to know certain things about me and what's going on. And Monice is trying to tell Tara Marie, you, you say that you only tell one person or this person or that person as if the information isn't out there, as if the information isn't readily available to everyone and anyone who's willing to listen and just flat out ask for it. That was Monique's kind way of saying, look, you're still doing stupid stuff in these streets and everyone knows about it, but you want to be mad at me? You want to be mad at me? That's what you want? <laughs> I got your number. But, you know, she's very calm about it because she talked to her son. She worked things out with Brooke. So she feels like she should be in a better place. And the person who... You know, she was at least friends enough with. She She's the one that she's having issues with? Really? Really? Okay, I got you, really. I got you, really. Shun meets up with Apple Watt's father, um, whatever his name is, John Watts. So, John wants to, and now he has a confessional. Look at uh, Mona. Miss Mona Scott Young. Miss Mona Scott Young. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Anyway. Shun wants to know what is this dude look... I mean, what is this dude doing here? Remember to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe and come back. Why is he asking these questions? So then she was like, I'm trying to take Apple Watts and Michelle next level. She needs to get her teeth done. She needs to get nails, hair, makeup. That needs to be on point consistently. I'm trying to make money with her. So can I see the contract? Like, what is your intentions with my daughter? She said, wait a minute. I know a little bit about this situation. So if you care so much about that, how can you even go and invest in your daughter's, you know, career? How can you even go and try to do this stuff for your daughter? And then, why does it sound like you want to do a 50-50 split? Why does it sound like you want to go and invest in your daughter with me? Like, what's your real intentions? This feels like some Joanne the Scammer type of mess. I said, Shun, Shun, all this, both of you, both of you feel like opportunists, to be honest with me. Both, both feel like opportunists in this interview. I'm not talking about on a daily basis, but I'm saying in this interview, both of this feels like some type of opportunist type of mess. And I'm not here for any of it, for any of it. But I thought it was interesting once the petty started to come out and she said, you know what? Why am I talking to this ugly dude over here? Why am I, <laughs> I said, Shun, Shun, 
All that matters is, oh, he's not going to go and financially invest in his daughters, whatever. Well, one, he doesn't really know what this is. I think that's part of the problem. He doesn't know what this is, but his relationship with his daughter is trash. Oh, I'm sorry. I should say tragic. Let me go and be respectful to Apple Watts and say the relationship is tragic. Um, so we're going to move on because that was a whole lot of nothing. <sighs> Brooke goes and meets up with... Akbar and Akbar again trying to do his recruitment mess. I don't know who is I don't know who isn't in his life telling him, dude, you can't just walk up to every beautiful girl and say these say these things or do this recruitment type of mess. Because she was just like, look, you know, I am not trying to do all of or any of that. No. No, I'm here about Tara Marie. And that's when we find out that Akbar is still messing around with Tara Marie. Not only is he still messing around with Tara Marie, he went and, you know, sent her off as she was going to the airport to go to London. So this is recent and I'm over it. And I'm looking at this situation like, so now you want to get mad at Moniz? You want to be upset at Moniz? For talking to K. Michelle, even though K. Michelle actually went directly to the source as an Akbar, and you want to be upset at Moniz. Anyway, Paris is apparently she got she booked this movie, and I don't know if it's the same movie that Amar La Negra is supposed to be on as well. Because again, like I said, my but it was cutting in and out for some reason, even though the weather's perfectly fine outside. Oh. But she, so Paris talked about her situation with K. Michelle and that $50, she's trying to ruin my career for $50. Now K. Michelle is talking to Monice about what was going on with Tierra Marie in London. And it was just too much. And this is when Brooke comes and Brooke says, Hey, here's a video. Because Akbar is actually still dealing with Tierra Marie and she's trying to go run yell at everyone even though it's none of our faults except for her own it's none of our faults except for her own and we're just here looking like Tweedledee Tweedledum it's not fair to us it's not fair to us it's not now we're at the gay pride event that I guess Donatella is part of um, promoting and Candy is there Candy is there in her Candy fashions and Jay Will is pleased. Jay Will is entertained. Candy was trying to throw um, some shade towards La Britney. And Donatello's like, no, no, I actually represent her. We're going to be classy. We're going to be classy. It's like, okay, classy enough. So now the gay pride event is going. Candy's performing. Once Candy's done, though, that's when things take a turn. Because Candy feels like, how dare. That man over there, uh, Mr. Ray, go and decide to not, ex this is, it's supposed to be a gay pride event, it's supposed to be inclusive, but Jay Will wanted to go and be heard as well, but they only wanted the shenanigans, as in Candy, and he was going off, and I'm looking at this entire situation like, they wanted to book Candy, which is part of your the overall package that you provide as an entertainer and you're upset but that you're gonna get a check because it's not just you so now mr ray's pissed because mr ray's trying to figure out first of all that wasn't professional i didn't hire you in order to go and do that uh like, this is why it wasn't even going to work in the first place. So, we're at the end of the episode. Hmm, this was quick. We're at the end of the episode where K. Michelle and Paris have that sit down. And the thing is, Paris is still hurt. Because Paris feels like, why is K. Michelle lying on me again? K. Michelle's trying to, trying to make it seem like I did not reach out to her. We were not friends. We were not friends. We were not close. So, why would I go out of my way to help her to go be by her side when we weren't in a good place i sent her a dm and i actually sent her my number number because i do not have her new number 
I did not have her new number. So I sent her my number. I said, wait, is, was that a 973 number? That's New Jersey. It's Perry. She live in New Jersey? <laughs> anyway. Uh, we saw the DMs. And we saw the dates. And I said, okay, Paris. Okay, so you have your receipts. So, okay, Michelle's upset because she's like, take full ownership. You keep saying $50, but it was more so like $300. And it wasn't just an Uber ride. You were doing little things here or there. $8 here, $16 here. And she was saying, fraud detected. Fraud detected. These are all of the receipts from the credit card company. Paris, take Kyle Pilly, ho. I'm thinking, oh my God, really? So I sent Paris to drink at her. Paris threw the drink at her. I said, mmm. This new K Michelle that had to get the surgery and just had the nose job and wearing the different complexion make doing all of that couldn't quit to react. The old K Michelle will start a fight. So that's when Paris is just like, you know what? Screw you. You you just uh Keisha Cole wannabe. Now that hurt. That, that hurt came Michelle. I saw that look on her face like, no, she did not say that. But that was the it. And I'm thinking, okay, you threw candles at people. You tried shaking tables on people. And you want to go and sue Paris? Is that how this works now? You get some money and now you get to do... Okay. Please like, comment, subscribe. Come back next week.